Arlington County Board held another virtual town hall on Friday, May 8th. The participants included some familiar names. County Board members Libby Garvey and Christian Dorsey, as well as Deputy County Manager Jim Schwartz, Dr. Ruben Varghese, and Aaron Miller. The meeting started promptly at 12 noon with opening remarks by Christian Dorsey. He addressed some questions about the coordination of the eventual reopening of certain activities in Arlington with neighboring localities. He gave the hypothetical example of the District of Columbia allowing bars to open before any of the other surrounding jurisdictions, with the likely result that those bars would become magnets for visitors from all around and attract too many people for safe control of infection. Libby Garvey also mentioned some conversations with Governor Northam, who has acknowledged that the COVID-19 situation in Northern Virginia is more problematic than in much of the rest of the state due to its high concentration of population. The governor provided some general guidelines and conditions for reopening or resumption of activities. One of these was an observed 14-day downturn in the number of confirmed positive cases. Another one was a 14-day downturn in the number of hospitalizations. A third one was the verification that hospital facilities and equipment, along with testing capability, would be sufficient in case of a reversal. Libby Garvey re-emphasized the need for coordination throughout the region since the virus was likely to get through any weakness in the system. There was not as much new material as on last week's gathering, Much of the content consisted of updates. At this point, the meeting was opened for citizen questions. One question involved the five-fold increase in Arlington cases, but with a number of different data points and which ones citizens should rely on. Dr. Varghese presented two slides. The first slide was the familiar display of two curves, one extreme and one gradual, demonstrating the advantage of taking precautions with the assumption that the virus would eventually burn itself out. The second slide was a more complex table showing the number of hospitalizations in all of Virginia, in northern Virginia, and in the broader area. Dr. Varghese recommended looking for consistent reduction in hospitalizations over a 14-day period which has yet to happen. He also mentioned that a flat curve is not the same as eradication of the virus, which would not be possible until a vaccine is developed. The second question came from someone with a symptomatic, vulnerable relative who has been unable to get tested for COVID-19. The suggestion was for the sufferer to obtain a prescription from a doctor, hospital, or urgent care facility. Libby Garvey fielded the next question, can Arlington County decide who gets tested? For example, can schools be given priority? The answer was nuanced. The state of Virginia ultimately decides, but they consider requests from the counties. For example, jails would be prioritized on a facility basis. When asked, when will there be testing for asymptomatic patients, Dr. Varghese replied that there were simply not enough supplies and equipment available yet. Aaron Miller reported the good news that some 200,000 test kits were on the way from the CDC. However, it must be noted that considering Virginia's population of 8.5 million people, 200,000 is less than 2.5%. There is still a plan for a third testing site for walk-up patients. As before, testing availability is limited to symptomatic patients with physician authorization and an advance appointment is still required. As before, Dr. Farkas and others encouraged residents to wear cloth face coverings or masks, wash their hands frequently, and continue to practice social distancing. One item that was mentioned for the first time was that, although more protective than cloth masks, The official N95 face masks are much more difficult to breathe through. A question came in about the mandating of cloth face coverings. The reply was that it was under consideration, but that voluntary compliance was still preferable, since mandating requires enforcement, which strains the system. 
People who have multiple cloth face coverings should wear a fresh one each day, and single mask users should wash their regular mask each evening. Other topics included taxes. Property tax billings will continue as usual, but payment extensions are possible. Specifically, there is a program in the works by which a 10% payment will be accepted on the original due date, with the John Marshall Bank covering the balance for repayment over a 10-month period. It was not specified whether or not any interest or service fee would be applied. An update on observable symptoms was requested, and there were some changes noted. The original symptoms were said to be fever, coughing, and difficulty breathing. To this list have been added chills, muscle pain, sore throat, and the loss of smell. Rarer cases included nausea and diarrhea. That being said, Dr. Varghese stated that sufferers should first stay home and consult a physician before seeking testing, since there are other illnesses with some similar symptoms. More questions came in about reopening, but Jim Schwartz observed that since Northern Virginia seemed to be having it worse than the rest of the state, they would have to proceed at a more cautious pace. Christian Dorsey fielded a question about the decision-making hierarchy. The governor's executive orders have the greatest force. Then there are certain regional concerns. And then the county has discretion in some of the details of implementation. In response to a question about Arlington's overall financial health, Mr. Dorsey replied that Arlington was faring better than many localities, but that the situation was still severe. We are sad to report that there were still more questions about the park closures, specifically tennis and basketball courts. As before, the answers from the board members and guests were diplomatic, but there were no plans to reopen those facilities before June. One questioner complained that wearing a face cover while exercising made it hard to breathe. The attendees let that one pass, but we at Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News would observe that it's easier to breathe through a mask than through severely damaged lungs. Libby Garvey wanted to acknowledge the special help coming from the library system, because much of the library staff has now switched to distributing food. In response to a question about obtaining aid from FEMA, Aaron Miller replied that this was done at the state level, but that there were other sources of aid that were also being pursued, such as the CARES Act and HHS. Arlington's goal with these agencies is to maximize allowability. There was yet another question about the parks, this time about best practices when they finally do reopen. To this, Jim Schwartz replied that, in the face of changing information, those concepts were still evolving. The last substantive question was why Virginia is so far behind the rest of the nation in testing, being in third from last place. Dr. Varghese then enumerated all the components needed for testing. First, swabs to gather samples. Then, transport media for shipping the samples. Protective equipment for the persons administering the test. Laboratories with the necessary reagents for testing the samples all of which are presently in short supply. The doctor did first list a symptomatic patient as a required component, but that's not technically accurate, and there is no shortage of patients anyway. The meeting adjourned at 1.17 p.m. with the by now usual reminders about face masks, social distancing, and hand washing. <laughs>